I usually think of a digital workplace as uh, fashion, you know? How can a good internal digitalization help improve employee experience? Well, I mean, first of all, I guess uh, you can uh, really work from home. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but before the pandemic, I think that was not so common for all the companies. And I think that, uh, you know, having uh, this uh, horrible pandemic coming to us sort of made us reconsider the way we work. And I think that was uh, one of the, if we can call it a, a positive effect of, of this uh, pandemic. How can like companies think about their digitization when it comes to employee experience? What are the core aspects they can think about? What are what should they be focusing on? Some practical like advice from you. So I think Spanish well, <laughs> one of one of many. Uh, but I think it's um, I, I usually think of a digital workplace as uh, fashion, you know, okay. when um, if you think about fashion, then it's, it's about when you can buy this pair of trousers or this other pair of trousers and uh, you probably want to get the best ones and you probably want to get maybe the not the best ones, but the ones that fit you the best and mm -hmm. the ones that, you know, when, when you look around, people are like, oh, you have really nice trousers. I like them. Mm -hmm. Where did you buy them? You want to cause that sort of wow effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think with uh, digital workplace, it's also sort of the same. So you want to become an actri a very attractive employer. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell your story. You want to say, hey, we are here. We're a cool company. We're hiring the greatest people in Earth. We want you to join. And I think... Uh, all of this combination of tools sort of create your, your virtual office, it sort of creates your, your brand and it helps you sort of, you know, becoming unique. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could take the path of like, I'm just going to be a traditional company doing things by the book and being uh, maybe not as, as fun. Or you could actually twist it around and make sure that the employee experience and this fashion aspect also sort of resembles your, you know, your really nice physical headquarters office that is very much linked and, and attached to your digital um, experience too. So awesome. it's, uh, it's super important nowadays. So say that um, you are at the very beginning of this journey, uh, maybe someone more of a traditional company that they are the beginning. Prusit. <laughs> we are out of the pandemic. <laughs> so say that you are a traditional company and you want to like dive into creating an amazing digital employee experience, where would you start? What would be your go through three tips? I would understand first what is the user experience that you want to, to provide and what is that sort of synergy, talent, experience that you want to have in, in your office, in your company, in your digital office as well. My recommendation is don't take the easy path just because it's easy. Take the one that is, you know, the combination of the most outstanding tools and processes and uh, applications that you can have to, to accomplish that. Would you go to the same store and buy all your clothes or would you look for more of a combination of the nice shoes here and the nice cap from there and the nice jacket from there and my raincoat for the rain, uh, I'm going to buy it somewhere else. Mm. So think about what you want to, what you want to, your package to mm. be and how you want to, to picture yourself. And also, but really understand what is that that your users need and what is that experience that, that your company wants to create. Do you start from like an experience that the company wants to create or do you start from the, the need of the user? Like how, the, how do you combine this? I think you combine both. It's very important that you also bring your own perspective. And I mean, uh, but you probably have already some experience and you have been able to, to go through a similar journey. You have probably learned a lot from the things that haven't worked so well in the past. So try to question those two. But I think it's really a combination of talking to, talking to your colleagues, spending time with uh, people that are maybe a bit more old school than you, people that haven't got the chance to experience the latest and greatest, and try to meet them in a level where you can learn from them and like uh, adapt all the, you know, all of these experiences for them to also to, to make sure that it, they they also make sense to them. Mm. Let's be super super practical. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, like go to things when you're just getting started you're you're really like okay we need to we need to take things to the next level most organization maybe are using like the microsoft suite or we don't need necessarily to go into specific tools but what are the the things i need to start thinking about as a uh, creating that experience i would actually not think so much about tools at the beginning i would think about what's going to be my change management strategy that i'm going to run you know you have made some work to select the greatest and best tool out there you have made your research you have negotiated your prices you're happy you're good to go but really how are you going to implement that so think about how you're going to make an impact come, on, come, come, come. On, on implementing okay. it
Okay. We are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so change management strategy, how did you go about implementing that change? Uh, and then also yes. I think it's, it's very important to think about when you are implementing something, are you reaching every people in your company or are you reaching the majority of the personas in your organization? So try to stay away from the, you know, more silo or like this is going to make IT really happy or this is going to be very secure, but it's going to be very far away from the other profiles. Make sure that, you know, what you implement is, is easy for everyone to understand and that, you know, that will get you, give you already a, a long path forward. From what I hear is about like creating an inclusive uh, process mm -hmm. where don't expect people to embrace the tool that you're just going to put in front of them, but rather like... Uh, take them, take them by the hand, and really exactly, like exactly. I think uh, digital workplace, or IT, any any sort of traditional IT organization as well. Uh, we are moving into more fun era where it needs to be productized much more, and uh, you need to to get that habit of like meeting your users, getting feedback, continuously improvement. Uh, I think one of my recommendations also would be to to be really open yourself to change. So like. You make a decision on a technology, that technology is the best for 2022. You do not know what's going to happen in 2023. And I think you yourself being ready as a leader to, to make those changes would, would give you a, a lot of uh, you know, good, mm. good, uh, good foundation for the future. You talked a lot about fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. So what kind of good raincoats can you recommend in June in <laughs> uh, Stockholm? <laughs> well, mine's are pretty crappy, actually. I've never... <laughs> <laughs> had to use one, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm more of a summer person, you know. Move out of this country. Then. That would be one of the <laughs> yeah one of the things you could do. <laughs>